Alright, what's up guys, and of course as always, welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better. And this week we're covering the fat normal berry snackers in Snorlax vs. Gredient. Now, it should go without saying, if you've been following my channel for quite some time, I've tried for the longest time to get Snorlax in these episodes, but they haven't been anything like it. Snorlax, kind of niche of a bulky offensive Pokemon with a really slow offensive Pokemon stats, has not necessarily been replicated till Generation 8 ingredient. And what do you know? They didn't differentiate them enough at all. Uh, they are fundamentally the same. So with that in mind, it's clearly up to me to go over which one of these two that are by, of course, Smogon OU, but also Lee and fundamental niches better than the other. So with that said, gonna cover the Pokemon introduced first, and that is, of course, the fat bastard from Generation 1 in Snorlax. So normal typing. Not necessarily the most exciting typing, but it does allow you to not be weak to that many things besides fighting and immunity to the ghost. But, of course, it's very uninspiring. Um, but with that said, what does Snorlax have? Well, it has a very, one would say, defined what it can do. Uh, HP is 160, you know, a behemoth of a stat, really. And then attack and special defense is 1 or 10. Basically, this is a Pokemon you can't beat specially offensively. Or if you can, it's going to require a lot. And then we have 65 in its HP, and, or I mean, its defense, 65 in special attack, and then 30 in speed. Yeah, it's low. It's absolutely going to go last. It has a defense stat that is low, but 160 base HP kind of allows it to be that low in its defense and still be somewhat viable. And, well... Special attack is where it is. Snorlax has been always like a really, really high tier viable Pokemon, probably one of the best, if not the best normal type in a league area, and it has because of this stat distribution. It is a very, very reliable tanky Pokemon, and the speed of 30 has always allowed it just to be a really good trick or sweeper. Um, its abilities, all three of them are viable, though two are more frequent than the last one. Um, immunity, which gives you resistance to poison, or immunity to poison and toxic a uh, good one definitely you see its benefits though usually it's rare rare to see um, usually can be combined with assault vest though we have thick fat that actually are better with of course assault vest thick fat does make you resistant to fire and ice too and no ramification for that like that you get that there is no <laughs> it's not like brain dry skin where you get a weakness of fire and absorb water no get two more resistances really really crucial for this type of uh, normal type but since it does allow you to have more resistances than you usually have and resistance to ice always relevant and then we have Glottony which is something that has gotten better with the generations that follow to introduce our generation 7's figure berry and other berries that actually boost your HP of 30. Glottony activates those berry faster which in theory makes you able to recover your HP and 160 base HP, yeah, you kind of you kind of want to do that, and that's been a really really standardized item to get with Curse Lags, or just if you want to be a bulkier Snorlax overall. Super scary, um, very very good abilities overall. <laughs> so the move pool of Snorlax is super wide, so wide that I can't fit on the screen properly. Thank you, Game Freak. But quite frankly, what what can I say about this move pool? Well, Generation Eight kind of nerfed Snorlax somewhat. We lost return and we lost frustration. That's unfortunately something to keep in mind. And also, paralyzation was nerfed in Generation 7. So, even though it gets Body Slam, which is its main move, or best stab move, if you don't want to consider Facade, it is not necessarily that benefit of paralyzing, besides, of course, getting them fully paralyzed at turns. So, what did this Pokemon learn? Well, it is too many things to follow. Though, I'm gonna mention the moves that matters. Uh, recycle, of course, awesome, since I absolutely get yourself able to recover more, of course, of berries. And then when it comes to setup, this Pokemon has Curse. Curse is super good for all the relevant reasons. Um, to say the least, one thing that really makes Curse good is because it does help its slow speed to be, you know, it can be even slower. It doesn't necessarily get any or loses anything by it, but boosting attack and more relevant defense does allow it to be bulkier than ever. Then when it has the filler move, it has plethora of filler moves. Um, earthquake, Ice Punch, Fire Punch, Heavy Slam, High Horsepower, 
um, <laughs> just send headbutt even so it gets all the things you need stone edge rock slide I don't believe it gets stone edge but it gets absolute rock slide it even has seed bomb to be able to deal with something like quagsire or seismitoad so it gets super power to I believe and the curse set actually benefits somewhat actually for body press if you want to capitalize on that though overall the curse set do allow it to work really well with your shadow claw and body slam it's plenty uh, overall really good move pool it does actually complement its abilities and in a league aspect due to this broad move pool it can do a lot of roles just right it's just a matter of what you need you will most likely solve them and prep me for a Snorlax is tough it is heart-wrenching and very very keen and one thing I forgot to mention is due to it getting heavy slam and heat crash it can absolutely benefit from its rather heavy and hefty weight to actually benefit for high damage output as fire punch while good it's not always ideal but overall <laughs> I mean Snorlax is one of those perfect Pokemon that I don't believe tiers define it is rather about matchup and this solves the most of them Snorlax is awesome that's about it so you figure with Greedian that you know what can it do that Snorlax can't like Snorlax still has already one right hardly hardly Greedian is one of those weird Pokemon that I don't believe anybody wants to talk about I always forgot to say that Snorlax gets Pilidrum and that is his most relevant Trick Room set, so sorry for that. It, it clearly is of relevance. And um, the reason I said it is because Greedient might just do it as well, if not better. Because it turns out, Greedient is slower than Snorlax by 10 base speed. Who knew the not-so-fat Squirrel is f actually slower than the fat Totoro? I mean, come on. <laughs> but besides that, the stat reduction of Greedient is really interesting it's 120 base H hp is still a behemoth of a pokemon it's not 160 but it still is you know, a hefty chunk then we have 95 minutes attack and defense so it's physically not as offensive or scary as um i was gonna say totoro or snorlax but his defensive capabilities does allow it to be bulkier than snorlax ever could and that is really really cool Unfortunately, 75 in special defense does mean that Snorlax is absolutely eating hits better, especially offensively, than Greedent ever could. But 120 base HP does allow it to take especially offensive hits a lot better than most Pokemon. What else can I say? Um, abilities Cheap Potion, Gluttony. Gluttony needs an introduction. Rarely use Gluttony, however, on this Pokemon because of one reason Cheap Poach is really good ability on this Pokemon and it actually is the first Pokemon that does do this ability right as while Dedene and Diggerspy have gotten it they have not been on these type of bulk you know, a lot of HP to capitalize on it as Sheik Poach does get you once you pop your berry you do get a recovery of 33% of your HP having 1 at 20 base really complement that ability and Greedian stands to be the absolute best Cheek Poacher and it does allow it to build upon its strats a lot more efficiently. So Greedian's move pool is a bit on the niche side, I would say. It has three ways of setting up, or four theoretically. We have Billadrum, we have Anisha, we have Stockpile, Defense Curl, want to count that. And then we have Stuff Cheeks. Stuff Cheek actually activates your berry once you use this move. So basically, if you have a recovery move, you get that recovery berry move. And then you also boost your defense by two. Kinda cool. I like this. I think it's a really cool strat. But besides that, the reason that strat is good is because it does allow body press to be very, very efficient as this Pokemon gets that. And uh, it has, you know, much like Snorlax, it has, you know, relevant body slamming. Uh, one thing it has over it is Jarrow Ball, which is really incredible to get with Super Fang, which does allow this Pokemon to be somewhat defensive if you need to. Besides that, it is a normal type. It gets normal fillers basically that all these Pokemon gets and I really have no idea why we have the Fang moves, the Thunder Fang, Ice Fang, Fire Fang, we have Crunch, we have Bullet Seed, you got the Psychic Fangs and Super Power, even Earthquake and uh, well a last resort when I capitalize on that but yeah it's while it isn't the broadest of Moopool it does get a lot of things that really messes with people and opposing Pokemon I guess um, I really like myself the Super Fang set to get a more bulkier aspect or even the Stockpile set to get it with Rest, Sleep, Talk and Body Press. If you can pull it off, it's incredible. Uh, if you have a Trick Room team, 
this Pokemon, of course, does use it really well due to stuff she actually is able to get its recovery once it's a Belladrum, much like how C Belladrum worked, but after Belladrum, you actually get your HP back to full, which does allow you to, of course, beat Pokemon quite frankly a lot easier. Unfortunately, it is on the slow side, which means once the Frequent is over, so is usually Regent if you want to capitalize on its attack, because while it is scary at plus six, it isn't as offensively capable as Snorlax, it doesn't have as broad of a move as Snorlax. But what it does in, in the Trick Room Builder, I'm set, it might actually do better than Snorlax. But besides that, it has niche things that we rarely get to talk about, and it does allow it to be a very, very distinguished and great asset to this generation. So yeah, I think it goes without saying that while I actually think Regen is incredible and a great asset to this generation, it doesn't have all it needs to beat Snorlax. And it might actually be a few mutual removes away to pulling that off as, you know, without Recycle, it doesn't necessarily own up to the Sheep Pose ability as well as it could. And, um, you know, it goes without saying, Snorlax has been a staple of OU and, you know, a high tier place since its introduction. Regent has fallen into the on-tier precedent and uh, you rarely see it in the league while Snorlax just because of its defensive capabilities and abilities that actually complement the teams a lot better Snorlax is just a really really good team player and is without a doubt the better Pokemon here and I think you guys kind of get that like I'm really happy that Regent was introduced but this episode was absolutely about the just the massive threat that Snorlax is and what it does to the tier, it is one of those league Pokemon that just thrives and it's still good in all ways in Smogon OU. The only thing going against it is possibly its normal typing, which is its greatest curse, really. But besides that, I'm really glad they introduced Regent and I hope to get the chance to build upon that Pokemon a little bit as I do believe it has the capabilities of be a really, really offensively capable Pokemon. But as of right now, Snorlax has been the man for quite some time and it wouldn't surprise me if he keeps being just that the man so with that guys we're thank you all for watching and you know i haven't planned out my next episode so you won't get a trailer for that but we will be back next wednesday so until then guys as always have a great day and take care